we are bringing another course from the land of maple leaves canada a two year diploma program combining computer system theory with hands on software development experience good evening everyone welcome to university living youtube channel you're watching ul tv student diaries i'm shefali shrivastav we are study abroad buddy a diploma in computer system technology is a widely recognized credentially high valued by employers with this program graduates develop well round skills for careers analyzing designing developing softwares and many more to talk further on this topic we are joined by kevin from british columbia institute of technology hi kevin how are you hello i'm fine how are you i'm doing great thank you so much for joining it uh, us from there and i believe it's going to be an year really soon for you living in canada so how is canada so far a uh, quick good uh at the we, i'm here for about like half years and already come across the winter which is uh, the quick weather is quite quite bad these years but uh, right now it's it's great a uh, lot of uh, fun here right right so how is canada like have you only imagined canada like a city like it is right now or you imagine canada in different way and right now you, when you're living you know that there are different nuances to it Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. First of all, I'm coming from Hong Kong, so um, it was a um a very um a very commercial city, which is like uh, right now in Vancouver. In here, uh, I'm living in downtown, so um, there's a lot of people around here, and also um, there's traffic and the people around here are very crowd. So um, it, it's quite family familiar with me. So uh, I, I I'm quite uh, accustomed to here, but um, what difference is that uh, there's a lot of people come from around the world, which is uh, like a lot different than than Hong Kong, which is a uh, kind of like Asian base. But um, in here you will meet a lot of friends. Uh, you will um, meet a lot of people and a lot of great food in here also. So it's quite funny here. nice so it, it's nice that you don't feel homesick a lot because if you're familiar with the culture it does create a lot of difference with your current living situation so definitely Great. yeah and and one special point is that in here there's a lot of like people coming from hong kong from china from thailand which is, some of them are living here for a long time so i i do meet a lot of friends that just talk about in their own language <laughs> <laughs> that's nice so you, you are living in a small town which is you know it's a home away from home what we say over here uh yeah yeah it is long a uh, long way here but um i think um as i i can quite get used to here so it's not a big problem correct correct so kevin you must have been given any kind of english proficiency test while you were enrolling yourself yes. so what mm -hmm. which test did you took and what are your suggestion based on that test do you recommend similar test to other students do you really think that the student should take test because a lot of universities in canada have their own accreditation uh, exams for proficiency english proficiency so do you think uh, do you would you recommend a university english test or would you recommend a global english test so um first of all uh, when i am um, taking the test for the um bcit so um in in normal in normal time they will accept only like ielts well, which is uh, for the international students but uh, at the time when i applying i was uh, in in the time of covid um the ielts in my own country um uh, really didn't uh, have the um in person test center so um at that time there is uh, one exception which is i can take is duolingo duolingo test is a purely online test uh you can like um take it uh, like whenever you want uh, but it also um take a uh, like reading writing and also listening and um you 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 also need to like talk a bit about um how you are how you pronounce your english the test is more like um uh, about um how you interact with people rather than uh ielts which is the more acad academic base they want you to uh like to write a lot of passage but in duolingo there was not so um for some people that test may be easier but um for some other people maybe they prefer to, to write a lot of things or they, they don't want to like um a lot of like uh, real time english interaction then that test would be difficult but um 
And, but for which test alone, um, they have a, quite a high standard for, for you to pass. So um, for me, I, I'm not saying prefer which one because um, um, different people like different tests. But uh, for um, right now, I think IELTS will be more um, worldwide and more acceptable by, by most students. Yeah. So um, it depends on your choice. Okay, so it's of course a personal choice, but you would recommend IELTS as it is being recognized with like most of the major countries and most of the major universities. Yes. Correct, makes sense. Yeah, does yeah, make yeah. Sense. <laughs> does make sense. Now, at what stage while you were pursuing your you know schooling, at what stage you realized that okay, I want to go abroad, I want to pursue my international study abroad team. How did you start planning your study abroad journey? <laughs> so uh, actually, I'm not a first graduate secondary students I'm, I'm quite quite uh, elderly so um uh, I, I did have some working experience but I, I want to come to Canada so um uh, I was uh, also like working as a developer a, also in the computer field but I want to like uh, advance myself I want to um come to Canada to have some um, study experience and then find a better job here I want to have some living here so um I, I try to find some university that uh, will be uh, at least recognized in the in the Canada uh, not just uh, study for something and then um not useful so uh, at that time i choose um, multiple um, college so one is the bcit and luckily they are uh, sme me as a uh, as a student so um it was like uh, 20 um early in the 20 uh, 2002 at that time it was COVID, and i was like afraid whether i can come here because uh, there was a lot of restriction sure. on on taking the flight so um but when i um get my um student visa around like july so um at that time everything is settled then uh, i can book my flights and come here uh even there's some like restriction like you need to take some vaccine or something like that but but Luckily, I can come here on time. So um, I then I start my journey as a student like in September. Great, great. So mm -hmm. a lot of people think, which is true also, it's not completely false, that studying abroad is a little ex you know, expensive. Okay? It's a so did you consider mm -hmm. any funding options for this? Or have you self-funded because you have been working for a while and then you wanted to settle down in Canada, so you started doing this course also? Yes, yes. Uh, when I was um, thinking about coming uh, to Canada, like at least like two or three years ago, I, I did already started my saving, and uh, it, it it needs some some kind of funding for for me to come here because uh, the the price for a college or even university compared to like United States, it, it is a lot cheaper, but. Um, for the living in here, it's the standard the same as United States. So um, the what what you need to prepare is uh, like um the cost of a uh, part of the tuition is uh, uh is uh, one I think like thirty percent of your of your um saving, but the other like seventy percent is about how you live here for two years, especially how you like um find some uh, place to live. Uh, even you planning to do some part time here, but it can't be like a source of income for you to um live here. So that that has to be a quite long planning for you to come here. Great. The number that you have told us, like forty percent is the tuition fees or related to the study, but sixty percent is mm -hmm. the lifestyle that you live. It creates a lot of difference in anybody's cost of living, which we're gonna discuss further in this session also. But yeah, yeah. if you have a lavish lifestyle, then that sixty percent gonna take like. A lot of toll on you and then you're gonna run multiple errands you might go for a multiple part-time jobs which might hamper your main goal of going over there like studying so it's very important to have that balance how are you managing that balance are you doing any kind of part-time jobs as of now right now uh not really not really because um the study in here is quite intense <laughs> so uh unless uh well right now is summertime some of my like um classmate they did they, they take some um not just part-time but they, they did take some like um a summer job okay. so full-time job in here so maybe that 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 will uh, give them some income for for the later stage but um i think um the better management for international students especially their international student fees a lot so uh better to be prepared 
beforehand <laughs> it's, it's much better <laughs> that makes sense a well prepared person can always take the right decision because they're calm and composed and they are not under pressure to take any call so does mm-hmm. make sense. kevin would you can you share some information based on the scholarship also does british columbia institute of technology provide such scholarship for this course or scholarship to my knowledge um they, they they do have some scholarship for their people who um study in it of course in a very good grades uh if for like people who come before um their their um college they, they do have some um I feel about like five thousand Canadian dollars uh, scholarship at least uh, for their people who really good at their college uh, 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 exam results. Um, so they they will have in in some way. So um, because in here in the um, British Columbia um, Institution of Technology, we are only study for two years. So um, you the the. The fee is very different than a um, normal university, which is four years. So um, you, you can consider like um, the tuition is like half. So if they have some scholarship here, then you will have uh, quite a good help in, in the tuition. Cool, cool. That makes sense. Now, if you talk about this course, we have already spoken about the funding option, you've spoken about the exam option that how to get enrolled in that university. Now, if you talk about this diploma course, it's a two-year program. Right. Mm-hmm. So there must be a lot yes, of course, yes. similar course happening in your uh, home country. So wh- mm-hmm. What made you choose Canada over that part? And how does this course differ from your home country, uh, Hong Kong, if you talk, home, uh, you know, China, if you talk about? And what are the mm-hmm. prerequisites for this course? Like, is it important to someone come from a computer background? Is there a specific course that they need to have before they join this program? Okay. So, first of all, if to compare with um, the similar um courses in hong kong uh usually in hong kong there's uh we we will study um the computer science in the university uh so um in, in hong kong the standard is like also four years so there's no option for you to study two years and then you graduate as a like computer studies or computer science um graduation so you are saving time to study in in this um um PCIT here because it is actually a polytechnic. Um, the focus a bit difference is that um, in PCIT they are uh, focus on like um, for you to ready to get work. So um, the training is very practical. It has less uh, like um, from from this size they are uh, theoretically based. So they teach you teach you about a lot of a lot about um, analytical skills, uh, science, that side of better. But in um, in the BCIT, all the things are practical and they are quite um, focused on the project. So um, in each year, you need to do like at least um, two big projects. And in the last year, you, you actually need to like um, have some um, practical in the real um, company. So, so you you will have some experience before you really get to uh, go to the job market. So this is what the research you want. So um, it is is um like if you compare, then it will be like um you are you are the one who like ready for work when after you graduate from BCIT. Also in the BCIT, you are studying like one 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 hundred and twenty credits in the two years. So it's equivalent to the, like the, the four years study in the university. It's very intense. It's very compact. So in, in each semester, you, you need to take like um at least five or six classes. So all the time you need to do is to to to, to handle the homework, the exam or something like that. So um that's different different purpose. So if for, for compare it, it would be um I think it would be more a bit difficult in, in studying here rather than you're enjoying university life in my home country hong kong or something like that but um but it is it, good because if you want to find some good job in here then this is a shortcut true true and of course mm-hmm. if these kind of projects you have to keep on updating and you know sharing with the professors that that keeps you on toes so that's mm-hmm. something that, of course, yeah. everybody is looking for when they are going for international education. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But- so, um, especially one difference is that uh, for for me, who is uh, not recently graduate, uh, this is a very, very good um, study experience because uh, we are not, 
oh, we, we are not too young. So we are not looking for like in the university to play around and then trying to have a lot of social life or something like that. And then, then this, this um like um classes usually uh practical and we we can like um handle it like uh maybe better than some youngsters so it would be more and more uh, better for, for us to be here great great makes sense so now uh, as i was asking earlier is there any kind of prerequisite for this course yes um english and maths so they are the two core consideration for for the um uh, computer systems. So uh, you need to get quite a very high score in, in those two areas. So um, other than that, they, they will they may consider a little bit about like if you already study some university classes, um, you have some like computer uh, science courses, you may have a uh, transfer credit to here. Uh, but the major is the English and the, and the maths. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this course entail? If we talk about if you have to, you know, divide this course in the four semester in the two years program, that in for example, in first semester, what exactly you guys study, then what do you study in the last semester? Is there any kind of specialization by the uh, diploma ends, or is it the same course across the two year program? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they do have uh, quite different in in each semester. So in the first semester, usually you will learn the basic. Um, even even they have very high prerequisites, but uh, they do expect you know nothing about like computer. So they teach you from the basic. Uh, you need to learn a lot of language or um programming, but uh, in the second semester, the the things will be like accelerating. You are trying to like learn like different aspect of like doing in the computer field. So you are not just a programmer, but you are also learning how to design or uh, how uh, the workflow of the um in the in the computing um, industry. And then in the third year and fourth year, you will do a lot of projects. And also, yeah, you you are right. You we do to have a lot of focus that you can choose from. So one of like the focus, which is very very phenomenal nowadays, the AI, which is uh, you have some courses that you can study here and do the project about that. Other than that, it's like cloud computing. And also maybe some people like to do some database, then there's some of different focus in the last semester. Oh, great, great. Thank you so much. Now we have talking, spoken about course, we've talked about Canada, everything. Now, main question, which comes to university, we talk about. You were clear that mm -hmm. you wanted to go and settle in Canada, but why? what factors were you considering when you chose British Columbia Institute of Technology over any other you know, university or institute in Canada? What better? I think uh, for me myself, I will I will very really focus on like how how the life I can do when I after I graduate. So um because um studying two years is even though it's not as long as university, but um it's still a a, a, a investment of my time in here. So um if um after graduation there will be some more or bigger chance for me to, to go to a better um, companies, that would be my first choice. So um, that's why I studied BCIT, because um, what the aim is that, or, or what the uh, marketing is about, um, the um, people who graduate, the, um, the rates of employment like something like more than 95%. So in every major, so it would be quite, um, for me, it's quite um, happy if, uh, I, I know that I would get some job, at least some some job after graduation. So um, do, there will be um, uh, one thing that I consider most. But uh, for other college, there, there will be some college that uh, focus on um, some studies that you maybe, maybe if you like to study education, there will be some other college which focus on that area. So, but, but that's not the subject I study. So um, that's why. I'm not considering other college. Right, right. Makes sense. So mm -hmm. uh, British Columbia Institute of Technology has a great alumni network and the placements, mm -hmm. uh, the companies that come into that has a great network, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, makes mm -hmm. sense. Now, this next question that I have is related to extracurricular activities only. And 
you are into computers, you you were talking about AI. I was just thinking, I'm pretty sure that you must be part of some robo AI, you know, club. So are you <laughs> part of such club? Uh, actually, robotic is not that <laughs> not not Please that focused. But, uh, but I I don't have that knowledge. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. But for like gaming or for yeah. like uh, like making some games, playing computer games, that's what we we love to do. And and also, um, if for for, for the other time, we 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 will do um, yeah yeah, we will also do a lot of lights. Study about 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 language or like like learning about new things like chat GPT something right. like that. Those are the things that uh, we, we we are interested in. So we like to explore a lot of um things, anything about computing. Um. So um in here you you want to talk about like um what what you can do uh, like other than studies. So um. Well, one maybe not very good news is that um usually people not taking too too many extra like curriculum activities because uh, the the study time is is quite need a lot of time for you to do. So um we will do some sports, we will do some gymnastics, uh, we will we will uh, like play some basketball or badminton in the free time. But for joining any other club, then I think I don't have that time. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I so when I you were mentioning about AI, so when I whenever I hear AI, I think okay, then there is something like rob robotics is also involved over there. So that's why I was asking this question. I understand that of course with the curriculum and everything, it's difficult to join such extracurricular activity. But you must have <laughs> joined some clubs which might be adding more value to your study. You know where you can network and you can uh, later on. Uh, you know, it can net help with you landing a great job. So there must be some such mm -hmm. clubs happening in the uh, university, correct? Yes, there, there's a student association which yeah. is very very active in like helping students. So um, if you um, so every every student in here will like hear about the student association and they will consistently have a lot of events. So uh, no matter it's just some student gathering or for for us. For the international student, they will have a spe special um, can it be say like society or club um, that uh, focus on the international students. So um, we can join their like some kind of um, uh, uh, events. Um, they they were like in Christmas or in uh, Halloween. They will do a lot of events for you just know the other students. And also, if uh, we are helpful, we we can actually help them to like do some like promotion or, or when the school have some open days. So we will also um, like help them also. Great, great. We're <laughs> almost near the end of our session, but I do have a couple of questions and I hope uh, you can help me understand that also. So no there's problem. one, uh, you know, there's one gap that most of the international students face sometimes is that their expectation before you know, flying to that destination is different. They have a different expectation. Once they land over there, the expectation doesn't mean reality. So what is the situation in your case? Has your expectation met the reality or not? Well, yeah, yes. If, if uh, for the one, the, the first things that I, I expect in here is that when I come here, I, I want to meet a lot of different um, new friends in here. Because um, in Hong Kong, you know, everybody is just Chinese. So um, I want to meet some people that is not, not, not just people coming from China or Taiwan. I want to meet anybody. But in, in here, actually, uh, when when I uh, come to school, I did, I did meet a lot of um, Asian students, especially. They, they're coming from like different areas of the country. But um, maybe it is not easy for at, at the beginning for, for us to meet a lot of people at, right at the beginning. So um, it would be a little bit slow for me to to like um, know um, different kind of students, especially when they are not in the computer uh, systems major. A lot of people like for business or some uh, for marketing or even from some engineering, they, they, they are quite um, gathering in their own society. So um, if I want to uh, meet them, maybe I need to join their um, groups, maybe some WhatsApp groups or others 
before I can like actually um, uh, know them. So it, it, it's a little bit slower than I expected to meet okay. many friends here. But ultimately, I, we, I can do it because um, they have a lot of chance here. So um, it's not really a big deal, like for, especially for the students who are looking to like in here have some new lives or they want to like um, make their own network, you, you can do it. Okay. Great, great, makes sense. Now, when you move to another country, or in fact, when you do a small step also in your life, it impacts a lot on your personal and personality growth, you know, your personality or development, it gets affected. And moving to mm -hmm. another country with a whole new goal has a takes toll sometimes on the same thing. How will you rate your growth and development personality wise before you were in Hong Kong and right now you're in Canada if you talk about? Mm, yes, yes. The 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 growth or development is it's different. Because in, in Hong Kong, especially uh when I already work for a few years in, in one field, you you usually think that your your limit is there. <laughs> so you are okay, your 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 life is uh, doing the, the 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 job as a um developer and then uh, within this a, a company. Um, and then uh, maybe maybe not much change in your personality. But when you are coming to Canada, especially you are coming to a new environment, then you will try to explore a more different part of life. Um, uh, or, or even we want to try to um, do something different, you will learn some more skills. Um, for example, like um, when, when, when in Hong Kong, I, I know zero about gardening. I, I won't try to do any anything about like um, to the environment or anything. But when you come here, because people are very aware about like um the, the environmental uh, health and also um a lot of people do the gardening at their home. So I also try to explore some of these things. So I try to like plant something in my home and also try to ask the people how you do the things. And also we will go to go. Uh, go to a lot of place for like picnic and also um there's a lot of um place that uh, you can visit which is never you will think about in Hong Kong so um those will make you change in your life so you will focus more on about like oh okay how can I like make my life uh more difference not just put myself in an office and then come home and then in a comfort building or something like that. So it will be good in here. Right, right. So you have become mm -hmm. more conscious with your decision making that whatever decision you're taking right now, what would be the impact of the same maybe on the environment also, but also on your life. So you have become more conscious what I can understand. Like it's a good conscious. Mm, conscious. Uh, when you take a call like you mentioned that Hong Kong, yeah you will not uh, you will just use the stuff and you will just leave it but why right now in Canada you will think that before I take this stuff what will be the impact of the stuff on environment so correct uh yeah 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 if I don't take the steps uh, coming here uh, probably I, I won't do any change right right that's mm -hmm. great so Kevin, when you uh, you are coming with an experience, you you're mature than other students who have freshly passed out from students, but still you considered a PBSA when you were flying to Canada. Why did you took this decision? Why didn't you thought that okay, once I land over there, then I look for an apartment? Why why did you chose a PBSA? Why did you book an accommodation prior landing in that foreign country? Yeah, because uh, I, I did ask a lot. Maybe some friends who have experience coming here, the first most difficult problem is finding a living in here. Um, well, um, right after I know I, I can study BCIT, so I already start trying to find some um, accommodations like in the last May or June. But at that time, when I try to find this, really, really hard to, to find something that is, um, uh, uh, suitable for me to live because um I I, I do have my uh range of like um living uh, plies uh, I can't like I have an infinity um like budget for the living so I will limit to 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 certain uh, kind of house or a certain kind of 
place to rent, but it's just very hard because um, many, many people also coming here for study and in Vancouver, especially it's a very small place. So everybody's looking the same things. Every student is like uh, when you when you when you see they're asking for for a house or for a room um it will be like very um small amount of supply right. so that's why i i must find find like the agent like university living to see anything it can help but like but even though for the university living there's a lot of lots of like inquiry so we we I do need to like wait for a very long time before I can see any suitable place to live. But in here, um, first of all, like for students who are looking for here, um, you need to have a, a that, that's the, the first thing you need to find as soon as possible. Or maybe better before you get some um, like um, acceptance from the university, you need to already look ahead. And also um, the budget, you need to like um, not just limit to uh, a very restricted budget. You need to have a, a quite flexible budget, especially in the September, October. Those times are very, very um, high demand. So um, um, if I can choose um, like whether I can, I can try again to find a living here, I would prefer to find but in the January <laughs> at the time when less students consider coming here, then you need to book at once. Right. So yeah. this is the new insight that our viewer will get. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Great, yeah. great. So you remember, Kevin, we were having this conversation earlier where you mentioned that, okay, uh, the cost of living matters a lot based on your lifestyle. So let's come to yes. this question because a lot of students will have this question and cost of living. Uh, just a disclaimer, guys, cost of living varies as per your personality, as per your lifestyle, as uh, how do you live? Do you cook inside? Do you eat outside? Do you party a lot or you don't party a lot? So whatever the numbers that Kevin is going to share, it's based on his experience that he has been going through for the past half an year or one and a half year. So if Kevin, if you can, uh, uh, you know, share some light on the cost of living at Vancouver with respect to grocery and other stuff. Okay, so uh, maybe so we start with living. So maybe I, I try to come up with some numbers about living here. So uh, um, I'm, I'm currently living um, in a, uh, a rent uh, apartment. So it's uh, because it's in the downtown area, the price will be a little bit higher. So um, if for like one room, one, one bedroom uh, apartment, you can like uh, looking for at least like 2000 Canadian dollars for one month. But uh, if you're looking for uh, like share with some roommates, so uh, you're going to find, find a room only and then try to find a, other, other people to share the cost with you, then you can uh, maybe lower it like a thousand dollars. Um, then when, when you're searching for internet, you may find some rooms that can be as low as like um 600 or 700, but they go very fast. So, um, and also if you are going to find some place which is um, um, privately owned, or there are some um, like um, people who rent it from, I don't know, maybe some stranger you don't know, but they are very cheap in price. That may be a lot of risk because um, a lot of people know that um, students are very um, hurry in finding the, the rooms. So um, there do some uh, people who is not really, um, um, I, I can say that they, they are not really want to rent a home for you, but they are want to take your money. But but those are uh, uh, that exist some situation like that. So um, if you you do know some friends to help you in here to rent, then you you need to find somebody which is uh, trustful to 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 do the job like an agent to help you find a room. Uh, otherwise, if you try to sign a contract, then with a stranger, then the risk is on yours. So you you are hard to find help if you when you come here and you the first day you land here, then you find that it's not what you expected. That will be a problem. Um, the other cost, like um, maybe about the food, because the people um, come here first of all, they want to know, okay, how how can I uh, have a dinner here? How can I uh, calculate my price for the food every day? Um, in here, if you like, for example, you take you take a McDonald's in here, uh, you maybe expect like um, 
$10, Canadian dollars, uh, or maybe a little bit more for here, because the inflation in here is quite a lot. So um, it, it is not cheap for the fast food. And also for like a dinner, uh, not, not a very big meal, or maybe just a, a very um, normal um, small restaurant, um, you can expect like 15 to 20 Canadian dollars. Uh, before tax, <laughs> <laughs> tax in here is high actually. <laughs> so, um, so, so those are uh, uh, the cost for uh, like if you want to have dinner outside. The if you you can cook, which is a better option. Um, you go to the grocery and then you buy some maybe vegetables. You buy some meats in here. Then you you can like uh, maybe um, lower it to like five to eight dollars right. per meal. Right, you because can do it. your yeah. whole meal, uh, the amount you spend on one dinner is like one week's grocery, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can buy, especially in here, most people heard about um the, the big grocery store like Costco. Then you can buy a, a huge meat and then you can separate it for a lot of meal. So there will be uh, some kind of cost saving for students in here because yeah, yeah, the inflation do, do hurt a lot of people a lot. So uh, we all think about how can we like save some some money. <laughs> right, right. That's that's a very important question that every student has in on their mind while they're studying abroad. Thank you so much, Kevin. With this question, we're almost done with our session. And before uh, we wrap up this uh, conversation, any advice for the aspiring students who want to travel abroad for to achieve their study abroad destination, you know, to achieve their studying abroad thing like regardless that they're going for Canada or US or UK any suggestion that you would recommend because you have been through that journey mm, I, I would have recommendation for coming to Canada <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it's my experience so um I, I would suggest if you consider to come here um you, you better come earlier because like in, in here uh, the no matter the tuition or the price of um, the living or other things uh, like raise a lot every year. So if you, you want to come here, um, better make the decision as soon as possible. Um, and, and in here, um, I think um, the, the, the experience that is, is, is very good because um, even I don't know um, how is it look like in UK or Australia, but in here, the people around is, is quite nice and use, and the environment is, is actually wonderful. So um, you will have a, a great experience like um, meeting people and then or go around the city or even go around Canada or United States. So you will get a lot of the different experience as in Asian. Right. So. Right. Thank you so much, Kevin. So. Uh, Kevin has a great advice. He has given multiple advice and insights throughout the series. So uh, conversation. So I hope you hadn't missed any. Uh, but yeah, planning your journey is very important. If you start early, you can get the best deals. So based on that only, we'll close our session. Thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us today. We hope you found it useful. Looking forward to seeing you guys next Friday at 5 p.m. Stay tuned to our social media handles for more information. Thank you so much, Kevin, again, for sharing so such a wonderful Thank you. with us. Have mm -hmm. a great evening. Thank you.